Good morning everyone. Today we're going to be talking about how I make my Meseta because from yesterday's video, I think none of you guys really cared about the star gems I had. Most of you guys were like, Caro, how do you have a hundred million Meseta? So in today's video, I'm going to be explaining the two different approaches that I take in order to make Meseta in PSO2. But first of all, if you're new to the channel, I upload PSO2 content daily. So if you do play this game, I'd really appreciate a subscribe as it really helps out the channel. Anyway, without further ado, let's begin the video. So the very first thing that I want to teach you guys is a crash course in financial management. Um, don't worry, I won't go super in depth. It's just going to be very, very surface level. All right. So you have active income and you have passive income. The difference between the two is active income requires you to put in time into the game in order to make Meseta. Passive income, on the other hand, doesn't require you to actively put time into the game in order to make Meseta. So we're mainly going to be focusing on the active income side of things because obviously the more time you put into the game, the more Meseta you're going to make. However, I will also touch on a little bit on the passive income side near the end of the video. All right. So first of all, active income. Okay, we're playing the game, we're farming for things, what should we be farming for in order to make money? You need to look at the player market and see what is selling and what is high in demand. Because things that are high in demand means that things sell faster and you get Meseta, which is cash flow, which will allow you to make even more money. Okay, so you need money to make money. The more money you have, the more money you will make. So right now, if we just look at the top sellers over here, solid barriers, recycle badges, uh, modules, grand precision, grand might. These are the main items that are selling very well. So out of all these items, what can we farm for? We can farm for modules. So for example, execute a module over here. You can see that's going for 1.1 million, but the average price it's been selling at is 1.3 million. So what you should do is you should farm for execute modules and it's actually really, really easy to farm for execute modules, especially if you're in a group. So what I personally do is I farm for multiple modules. I don't just farm for one because why only farm for one if you can farm for multiple things at the same time? That way it's more efficient with your time. So what I personally do is I run divide quest 31 to 35. A lot of people don't like to do that because it's difficult, so forth and so on. But trust me, it becomes a lot easier if you can get a group of four people. The reason why you want to run 31 to 35 is because Exegil can spawn, Varuna can spawn, Mitra can spawn, and it is guaranteed to have Shiva at the end. And something you need to keep note of is the Shiva drop table has actually changed. So she actually drops crack five, which is uh, extremely, extremely nice. So if we just look at a unit with crack five right here, you can see a three slot unit with crack five is going for 10 million. So if you happen to get one from a drop, boom, easy 10 million. And let's say that, you know, you're not as lucky. Maybe we go with crack one instead. If crack one units, you know, they're not going for that much, but let's change it to a four slot and see how those are going. That's 157,000 Meseta. That's still pretty good. And so you just need to look at the market and see what is selling. Another item I know that is in high demand but low supply is Veterans Resolve. Veterans Resolve is always, always, always in low supply, mainly because it's a pain in the butt to farm it. You have to farm the Risk Realm Extreme Quest, and a lot of people don't like to do this. So this has been another very solid source of income for me because it's 6 mil a pop. And Veterans Resolve 1 drops fairly often. And if you get lucky and you get a Veterans Resolve 3, Boom, that's 12 million right there. And if Divide Quest and Extreme Quest is too difficult for you, don't worry, you could always come to the Alliance Quarters. Hopefully you're in an Alliance. If you are, you can ask your officers to buy these triggers. Because when you're in an Alliance, if you go to the dedicated Alliance shop, you can actually buy the Cradle of Darkness trigger. So currently, you could do the Cradle of Darkness on Ultra Hard and a lot. And I seriously mean a lot of items drop there. There are a lot of catalysts that also drop there, which are worth quite a lot of money. So a great example is this unit over here with Reverie Catalyst. And if we check how much Reverie Catalysts are going for, you can actually see that they are worth quite a bit. So let's go Reverie Catalyst. This is a unit. You know, it doesn't matter. We'll just go four slot. So you can see that a four slot Reverie Catalyst is going for 3.5 million, which is actually really, really nice. 
So what you can do is you can just farm a ton, a ton, a ton of the ultra hard cradle mission because that mission is actually really, really easy and you've got 12 people with you. But I personally prefer divide quests and extreme quests mainly because finding four people or three other players is a lot easier than finding 11 other players. And so that's why I personally just run divide quest and extreme quest. And when I don't have any friends, then I just do the solo versions, solo divide and solo extreme. It doesn't really affect me that much. Okay. Now, last but not least, there is one more active income method that I use, and that is augmenting for profit. So if we go to product search over here and we search up guardian soul for units, you're going to notice over here that guardian soul is going for 83 million per unit. However, as we know, guardian soul actually requires three different parts. So what you can do is you can make the individual part and sell them. So for example, absolute glare, absolute glare is a very, very annoying piece to make, but you can see if you make absolute glare, you can sell this for 21 million right here. This is because a lot of people are willing to spend the money to buy the pieces already pre-made so that they can just smash everything together so they don't need to deal with all the hassle of actually making Absolute Glare as well as Astral Soul and all the other pieces. So you can see here that if you were to buy Astral Soul, that would be 12 mil. And if you decide to make Mana Reverie, you can sell this for 10 mil. And the last one is an Ether Factor. So uh, Ether Factor right here is 14 mil. So now I know a lot of you smart people are calculating in your brains going like, wait a second, if I just buy all those parts individually, smash that together, make Guardian Soul, I'm actually making a big profit. Yes and no. The reason why I don't do it is because there's RNG involved. As you guys may know, when you smash all those four things together, you have a 10% chance of making Guardian Soul. So you're probably going to need to use the protections, which uh, is even more money, because if we look at uh, recycle badges right now, recycle badges are going for 1.3 mil each, and you need 10 of them to get one protection. And if you fail, then you're going to need to use another 10. And so the cost adds up really, really quickly. But that is another method to make money. However, it is high risk, high reward, because if you do fail, you will lose out money after like two or three failures so there is a level of risk involved okay so that covers all the active methods because all those methods that i listed before requires you to actually play the game all right so let's talk about passive income it's very very important to understand that you're gonna need maceta in order to make maceta using passive income all right so the main thing is you're going to be flipping items on the market so for example recycle badges you can see recycle badges are going for about 1.3 million right now however if you bought recycle badges about five days ago it was 800k per recycle badge because of economics people were panic selling because they saw the prices of recycle badges going down so if you have the guts and you don't mind throwing money at a wall and you know no fear of losing it what you can do is you can play the market and playing the market is very very high risk high reward the reason i say this is because i personally got burned by this really badly i bought recycle badges like four months ago right and i bought it for about 1 million 1.1 million and i was like i'm gonna make a huge profit when augmentation week comes out when the klaus units comes out when guardian soul comes out and all that and i kept waiting so the prices went up i think it spiked at 1.6 million 1.8 million somewhere there but i was stubborn i was very very greedy and very very stubborn and i said no i'm gonna wait until it gets to 2 million so if we look over here at my personal shop and items to withdraw to inventory you can see here that i have 130 recycle badges which i bought at 1.1 million so this is literally like a 130 million meseta investment right here and i was playing the market i was like okay i know recycle badges are going to go up in price so i bought it at 1.1 million and i sat back i was like it's all good i'm gonna wait until it's 2 million i'm gonna sell it all and i'm gonna make a big fat profit well the problem was i read the market wrong and i was too greedy i wanted to sell it at 2 million unfortunately a lot of people were thinking the same way or the same thing and so when the boost week happened last week instead of a huge spike in the recycle badge prices 
it plummeted super duper hard. The reason was because everyone was thinking like me, oh, we're going to put it up at 2 million. We're going to make a big fat profit. And then other people are like, nah, 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 I'm going to sell at 1.8 million and sell that super duper quick. And people just kept undercutting, 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 and people were panicking. People are like, oh crap, I bought this for 1.1 million. The prices are going down really quick. I need a quick sell and get my money back ASAP. So this is something that has burned me simply because I got too greedy and I wanted to make a big fat profit. And so I'm not gonna lose money, but I'm probably gonna break even. But you have to take in consideration that I've been sitting on this 120 million in items just sitting there, right? I could have been using that 120 million in flipping other items or investing into other things like my gear so that I can farm even harder content or farm even more efficiently and make more Masetta actively versus just sitting on it where it does nothing, all right? So you have to weigh the different pros and cons between active income and passive income, okay? While we're still on the topic of passive and active income, I'm sure you guys want to see my view sales. So you can see over here that I've sold a bunch of random solid barriers over here. I'm not making that much money. I'm making like, you know, I, I round this up to 100K, but every little bit of Meseta counts. And you can see over here that I'm selling a bunch of Veruna modules that I sold because I farmed for these. I had some Execute modules, some Mitra modules. You can see that modules is a big source of my income simply because I farm for the modules actively, I put them on the market, I sell them, and they sell very, very quickly. So this is what I prefer to do, as you can see here, you know, a lot of the items that are selling for a lot of money, like the millions, are mainly all of these modules. Now there is a Basilisk Defender over here. The reason why this sold for 1.6 million was because it had Divine Order and something else. It was a pretty good drop from the Cradle Trigger, so that was very, very nice, all right? And so what I'm probably gonna do is I'm probably gonna run a little bit more Divide Quest, farm up a little bit more, or I might farm up some uh, Solid Barriers with uh, Veterans Resolve, so Extreme Quest because those also sell for quite a lot. You can see that it is going for like four mil, and this is just Veterans Resolve 1 with no slots. If we go with four slots over here, boom, that's six mil, easy peasy. But yeah, that's pretty much all I wanted to cover in today's video. Hopefully you guys found it helpful. If you did, I would appreciate a like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in tomorrow's video. Bye. What can I say except you're welcome for the heals, the boosts, the rest.